Uh, our next speaker is Tanvi Maheshwari. She's from ETH Zurich, breaking the wall of urban form and transport flows. Hello. Um, as a student of urban design, I was deeply engaged in the study of the urban form. And by urban form, we usually mean the physical aspects of the city, like buildings and streets. But as I practiced more with street design and open space design, it became clear that the movement of people and uh, vehicles and goods in the city, the transport flows, play a very important part in our experience of the city. You, the historic city design for pedestrians feels very different from a highway-based city. Yet, there is a very wide disciplinary wall between urban design and transport planning. We follow what is commonly called a predict and uh, provide model. By that, what I mean is the transport planner would predict future transport flows based on current travel demands, and then we provide transportation infrastructure based on this, so that's streets for certain capacities and certain speeds. This is what has led to the car-oriented cities of today. So our streets seem to be designed more for machines than for people. That's why this disciplinary wall needs to fall. More, today more than ever, because like Penelope talked about autonomous vehicles, right, that and many other uh, disruptions in transportation are happening today, which means future transportation flows are going to change. How is the urban form going to change? Well, if we want to continue to enjoy walking and cycling in our streets, if we want life on our streets and don't want to reduce them to mere containers for vehicular movement, we need to better integrate urban design and transport planning so that we're able to influence travel behavior through intelligent design decisions. Uh, in our research lab, we're trying to tra uh, close this loop through a methodological framework. What it allows us to do is generate multiple design scenarios, uh, conceptual design scenarios. Here you see three, four autonomous vehicles for a location in Singapore. And then we can, using agent-based activity-based simulations, generate quick simulations of the transport flows generated by these designs. So then we can see the impact of our design decisions on transport flows and vice versa, and then assess uh, them based on different metrics that matter to us, both qualitative and quantitative. This kind of integration then allows us to make more intelligent design decisions for future transport and urban planning. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is that the predict and provide model is obsolete today. And what we need to do is think about a more livable and human-centered future urban form first, and then assess many strategies several times over iteratively in order to provide for it. So that's my piece. Thank you. Yes, it is, but the, uh, the problem is bridging the gap between the two disciplines, urban design and uh, transportation planning. There are very sophisticated transport planning models that are developed over a period of several weeks, months, and then urban design decisions that are happening at a different time scale. To have them to interact, there are very few, there are no tools available to me as an urban designer to get a quick feedback on what kind of transportation flows are generated by that design. Thank you, Tanvi. Um, 